Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to TechEd webinar series, our endeavor to empower techies. We believe that sharing of knowledge is the key to enhance our skills and grow us as professionals. With this principle in mind, we have initiated a series of webinars conducted by industry experts to give you all a crisp insight of various domains. The topic of today's session is the new era of PHP using Composer for dependency and package management. Our guest speaker today is Devesh Kumar. Drupal SME PHP Tech Leader at Sapient. It's been seven plus years for Devesh in IT industry working with PHP and Drupal. He has also worked with Zoomla, Magneto, Type 3, Typo 3 and other PHP related many frameworks. He did his Masters in Computer Applications MCA from MG Rotak. Devesh joined Sapient in June 2011 as a Drupal PHP SME. He has been involved in system and architecture design, content modeling and workflow module development and implementing Drupal and PHP solutions. So without further delay, I introduce you all to a guest speaker. Over to you, Devesh. Hello, everyone. Um, this is Devesh from for Sapient and uh, I welcome all of you. So guys, um, so this session is all about PHP and uh, the de dependencies and the package management. So basically, uh, the question um, or maybe the topic uh, would gather around what actually is a dependency management and how can we improve our dependency management in uh, PHP related projects. So. First of all, uh, if we talk about dependency management, so I would say that if you remember that uh, when you start a new PHP project, well, what are the first things? Uh, I mean, what are the first things you would do? So you would just make a list of all the libraries, frameworks, or technologies that you want to use, right? Then you would go for uh, go and search for their home pages, download the code into your project, set up auto loading for each one and only then start actual coding for your own project. Everything up until now was managing your project dependencies. So this is a kind of uh, topic which we'll discuss about. So the first slide says uh, the key points. So this is basically the agenda of this session. So we'll just go about it. So first of all, the first session is the history. So we'll just talk about what is the conventional packet management, packet management which we were handling in PHP. And now the second one would be the problem and challenges we actually faced with packet management and dependency management. And after that, uh, we would provide a solution for that. And then dependency management. What is Composer? Dissecting different components of Composer and what is the potential of future of Composer? And then the last section would be your questions. So let's just talk about the history of conventional packet management. Right, um, so as you can see in this slide, there is an image which actually is stating three applications are there. So the application one, two, and three and all along is interacting with PHP and for the package or the external libraries because you may feel that there is a requirement of installing a Visivig editor or maybe some kind of external or third party extension to your project so you would be interacting using Peckle or Peer. So uh, let me tell you what Peer and Peckle is. So Peer basically is a PHP extension and application repository and is a framework and uh, distribution system for reusable PHP components. So people just create their extensions and reusable components and submit it to Peer and if anyone requires the same extension or libraries, they can get it from Peer. And Peckle is something of that sort, right? So just talk about this application layer. For example, if uh, I manage the package, using the conventional PHP. So what I would be doing, I would be just creating an application, interacting with Peckle, Peer, and then library X, Y, Z, whatever it's required. Right? If the applications are multiple, then what I'll be doing, I'll be just again 
uh, following the same rule, the PHP, PECL, and the library which are required. So the main problem arises with uh, this approach is just like this. Every application is interacting uh, multiple libraries, interacting with multiple libraries. For example, this is a crisscross problem for uh, the application. I would say this is a dependency hell. So why this is hell? Because the application one may have a dependency upon external library x2 and application uh, 2 is having the same uh, dependency on external library x and in the same way the application 3 is managing the dependencies with a uh, few other libraries. So for example let's just talk about it. If had it been uh, the case with a PHP developer how would he resolve this? So first of all he would have to get the list of all the dependencies which are required that particular project and then he'll be just downloading that all the stuff like in the form of libraries and uh, third-party extensions and then just keeping those library into a designated directory and then giving the reference to PHP file to include all the required files from those third-party extensions library. So this is a kind of cumbersome task which uh, we were used in past just because of uh, the fact that we didn't have uh, such kind of uh, interface in between the application and the library which can provide a common platform for those. So this was the actual problem uh, with conventional PHP management, a uh, PHP packet management. And this is the actual solution which could have been uh, done and it's actually been done with using a dependency manager. What is a dependency manager? Dependency manager is a kind of an interface or maybe the central uh, point of contact for all the external libraries and the applications. So for example if application 1, 2, 3 uh, requires interaction with certain libraries like x1 is required by application 2, x2 is required by application 1. So it doesn't matter what kind of version or maybe any kind of uh, nested dependencies. What do I mean by nested dependency is that for example if you require a Visivig editor like seek editor or any other extra editor so uh, it comes with the basic functionality of uh, Visivig editing like bold option and the formatting option but uh, in most of the cases the image support is not provided. So what you would be doing so Visivig editor would ask for uh, a kind of an bridge so which can provide the support with images and all. So let's just take this example that Visivig requires another library which is IMCE. But uh, you may uh, have a situation where you have just uh, created your dependencies as in the form of a list where you would require just Visivig editor. But just for good uh, to mention whatever is the nested dependencies. So this could be the case. And uh, as you can see that uh, I've placed the composer in the middle of application and the libraries. So composer works as a dependency manager which takes requests from applications, manages dependencies for each and every project because uh, this composer has, uh, has an ability to manage uh, dependencies per project. Earlier we used to get the dependencies uh, managed by peer or Packle, but that was global. So that is the kind of thing which dependency manager is capable of. Uh, so this is actually the, uh, I would say the definition of dependency management. So what dependency management is. Dependency management is one of the major requirement of core PHP project. As I've already stated the problem that you have to have a kind of dependency resolution before creating a project because um, that could uh, break your PHP code or maybe uh, some sections which depends upon third party or external libraries. And the second statement says there is not much difficulty in managing dependencies for a single project 
but when you start getting into dealing with multi module projects and applications that consists of tens of hundreds of modules that is where you would need a dependency manager to manage the dependencies and best way available so these are the official uh, i would say definitions of dependency management now we come to what composer is so this is a main uh, actually uh, section which we would be discussing uh, deeply so what composer is um, if you have ever written anything in PHP before you have probably found that it feels like you have to keep reinventing the wheel anytime you want to do a common task um, such as user authentication database management or request routing etc and uh, you know uh, PHP now has a handful of mature frameworks uh, some of them are like Laravel is there, Zend is there, and Coding Tatters is there uh, that have already solved the, m most of these problems. So, won't it be easier to ch like just cherry pick the bits that you needed from each framework? So, uh, I think uh, we need to uh, just get something uh, which can resolve our dependence in, dependencies in such a way. So, if you are working on framework X and want to switch over to framework Y so you you would not need to recreate your dependencies management again and again because every framework has got its kind of architecture and structure for example if framework Y has written in such a way which cannot be there or which cannot be admired by framework Y so you would need to have a dependency management uh, kind of thing reinvented for that framework Y because framework access management dependency management cannot work with framework Y so uh, if you were to start manually like just picking the bits from you wanted from Zend or Laravel or Symfony then it would become very difficult to manage each library might also have uh, kind of dependencies and so you would end up in a mess Particularly, particularly if you are required other people to work on your project. So this is a kind of problem which I actually see with the conventional PHP management. So this is where uh, Composer comes in. So Composer, what it does, Composer is a dependency manager for PHP and Composer will manage the dependencies for you require, uh, required by your project and uh, it will get all the dependencies downloaded to your projects so you would not need any external effort to get your dependencies or what I would say the libraries or external third-party APIs which you require uh, so everything would be managed by Composer itself and before using Composer why would I use Composer instead of Peer or Packer so um, if I would say that uh, why not peer so peer is just like a complicated piece of thing so if you are working with peer so you just have to add a channel first then you have to write the correct combination of characters that makes up the name of a channel and then download that thing but uh, there could be a chance you forgot something as I studied in earlier uh, side so you would need to upgrade the peer installer for latest version for example if I've created a package or package uh, list for peer to get downloaded and for instance I forgot something like there are several libraries which I need to mention what version actually I would be requiring so peer would not get uh, that downloaded for me so uh, what I would be doing I'll be just again reinstalling uh, the thing or maybe just starting the, that particular script again to get the download again so but because uh, again it could be a kind of uh, thing that for all my requirements it, it's it's mandated that there shouldn't be any kind of uh, what you would say uh, the beta version should not get downloaded so this is the thing which cannot be managed by peer so but 
if you talk about the composer, so there are several uh, uh, features and flexibilities which you can work with using composer and it will resolve everything for you. So this is the basic uh, introduction about composer and now we would talk about what are the different components of composer. So here are three different composer components. So first one I would uh, be telling you what is an auto loading, what is a PSR zero standard and what is a packagist. So uh, most of us uh, would know that what is an auto loading. So auto loading uh, in simple words is a method or maybe uh, the feature I would say uh, which has been introduced by PHP 5.x so because in earlier days of PHP we wouldn't we didn't have any kind of uh, uh, support where you actually forgot something to include as in form of your PHP files and PHP would uh, automatically include everything for you so you had to add a kind of uh, dependent on the usage of require or include methods which includes your requires files or um, scripts into your PHP code. So but with the invent of PHP 5.3 we actually got this auto loading method which automatically resolves all your dependencies or maybe the files which are required for your code without breaking your code or without breaking your functionality. And uh, the next, the best feature with the PHP 5.3 was introduced as uh, PSR zero standards. So basically, uh, these are the standards known as PHP specification requirements. So for for the time being, uh, these standards are maintained by PHP FIG. So FIG basically. Uh, is a group for interoperability where we can just create reusable components in PHP uh, and the PHP uh, has got this PSR standard 0 which is for auto loading standards so this standard actually uh, provides you ability to use your code anywhere without making changes so for example if I have uh, created a code or maybe a an extension we can take an example with so if I have created an example uh, sorry an extension using this PSR standard so it would uh, would have uh, this kind of syntax like for example if the namespace which I have provided in my PSR standard would appear like this uh, the extension name could be doctrine and the common is another directory which keeps some files or uh, scripts, PHP scripts. So if the namespace is doctrine, then the common and the isolated class loader. So class loader could be a file or maybe your auto loader or bootstrap file, whatever it could be. Uh, so the path for PHP would be considered as the path to your project, lib vendor. So just before doctrine, it could be anything as for your project as for your frameworks requirement it could be anything but after doctrine what it would consider there would be a directory doctrine and then another directory in doctrine is common and then common would have a file which is isolated class loader dot php so this is the basic standard which is maintained by psr0 for auto loading and the same standard has been used by uh, Composer. So the next part comes is the packages. What packages is? Uh, packages is a kind of common repository which uh, has got all the contributed uh, packages uh, created by Composer. So it's a kind of uh, an extension repository as we uh, 
have just similar to peer but it, it totally based upon uh, composer so whatever we actually create with composer we can submit that to this repository and this repository has been segregated in two parts so you may feel that if your code shouldn't be available to any other uh, except two so you would be using this packages uh, tool which is known as status so status is a kind of private repository which can uh, have a pr privilege management so you would be uh, only user or you would be the only user who will be using this packages and anyone else would not be able to use this so in the picture you can see that there are few packages which have been integrated uh, using composer and submitted to this packages repository now um, come to what I mean how we can use composer so the first step for using composer would be to install that of course so composer can be installed in two ways either you can use curl command to get composer from http get composer dot org or you may get a composer dot fire file uh, from the get composer dot org as well and you just have to place that file into your project root so dot uh, fire file basically is a php archive file and then um, to verify the installation to uh, whether the composer has been installed or not so you just have can place this command composer hyphen caps v and it will show you results something like this composer version and the version of composer which has been installed on your system the next step uh, is define your package for every project you would require to create a composer.json file because this is a main file which has got all information about your uh, dependencies what are the requirements which needs to be resolved using composer so you will be creating a file composer.json and keep it to your root I mean root of your package and it will contain uh, this is a minimal information which would be required so the name name and the your vendor name vendor name uh, could be as I stated in doctrine doctrine could be a vendor name and the package name package name could be anything and the require uh, tag actually provides what are the requirements to create this package so for example I am just creating this composer package and the minimum requirements are PHP 5.3.0 so that means it will not get installed until unless we have 5.3.0 so what it will do it will just download that PHP version 5.3.0 and put it what wherever it's required like wherever the configuration you made with this composer dot file and another vendor another vendor means that means you can um, include multiple vendors files for example if there is a package uh, which is created by vendor A and there is another package created by vendor B and you want both packages needs to be installed at your PHP project or PHP application so you would be mentioning that another vendor slash package and then colon and the version of that particular package and then again comma in the next line you would uh, rewrite the same line by changing the values like the vendor and the package name so this is the kind of information which is required to put in the composer.json file and put it that file in the root of your directory so your project mainly and the next step would be to publish your package so publish your package means once your composer.json file is created and uh, everything has been uh, in place like you have tested it so uh, for the extensed document uh, you can just refer to uh, get composer.org because the documentation is very good at the site 
and to publish the package so you would need uh, an account at packages and once your account is there you can just uh, upload your composer.json file over there and create your package so I would say that uh, somewhere around till date somewhere around 4.5 million installations have been done using composer so it's it's a kind of uh, status which uh, as per the March 2013 so these are the few links you would uh, like to go on because the first one is obviously for the composer and next one is to understand what is PSR 0 so PSR 0 is actually uh, an important ingredient to use composer because without using PHP uh, this standard of PSR 0 you would not able you would not be able to understand what and uh, how actually the composer is working so uh, this this uh, the problem with dependency management has been resolved by composer in such a way but it uh, would require you to understand and uh, deep dive in what is auto loading what is psr0 why we should not use peer why peer what is the difference between peer and uh, composer so there are few things which actually you need to read out so the next slide comes for potential and future so the first statement says that greater than 500 packages are on packages so plus 115 fab so that means uh, we have already got so many packages and people still are contributing their packages to composer and uh, many early adopters many early adopters uh, by this line I would mean that there are too many newly created frameworks which are already using this uh, the flexibilities and the features of composer and uh, composer at composer get composer.org you may also find uh, the installation for uh, very well known CMSs like Drupal, Magento is there and WordPress is there so you just have to download the composer for composer.json for Drupal or maybe for WordPress and then just execute that composer file with your composer setup and it will install everything for you and the next one is supported by framework or libraries so as I stated that most of the frameworks are already using this uh, Laravel and Zend is all Zend has got few libraries based upon it and uh, code igniters extension is also created at composer so these are well known frameworks which are already using this and uh, it also has got a feature just like project specific dependencies so I would say that uh, because earlier we used to have dependencies based on projects which uh, were actually too cumbersome to manage uh, on the project basis because we used to have peer and peer does uh, provides us flexibility to manage everything on global basis not project specific basis but as the spectrum of uh, PHP is there so we would need uh, something which actually can resolve dependencies uh, on the per project basis or maybe the requirement as per per project it also provides you a kind of uh, lightweight application because uh, a composer in itself is a kind of uh, small application which resolves everything it uh, moreover you can also create few kind of script support so once composer once your JSON file is there in place the composer.json is in there and uh, instead of triggering it manually you may also provide the references to few of the scripts which is actually 
uh, responsible to execute that particular file. So you would not be requiring any kind of human intervention if you use those script parameters in your composer.json file. And the next one is interoperability is through shared interfaces. So the first uh, thought would came to my mind, uh, I mean come to my mind regarding this point is that uh, whenever you are creating a, a kind of package in Composer or uh, an extension which is which you need to submit so you can just create it a composer file uh, and I mean share that uh, I mean you can just share that file with uh, the multiple uh, projects or it can be submitted to uh, the packages where the people can just get that downloaded so interoperability means I, w I would mean that the same package can be managed uh, with multiple platforms without uh, taking care of what kind of platform architecture and structure is so once the composer file is in there it will not care about what kind of platform or structure I'm just using it will be just uh, getting all the dependencies for that particular project and the project is actually responsible how it can be uh, I mean the project can deliver with this uh, downloaded dependencies and all so this time we would have few questions Okay, so this question is from Dean Dayal and the question is, is that Code Igniter framework is good with dependencies? Uh, for me, uh, the Code Igniter does actually resolve the dependencies uh, just by downloading everything and putting them into the library or the designated folders but uh, there is an extension for this code igniter framework at composer uh, I mean at packages.org where you can just get a package for this uh, code igniter the next question is from Truf Thakir. So the question is, can we use YAI framework and composer to create apps other than PHP, WordPress? Yes, definitely we can because uh, composer is not a kind of just uh, for any specific framework. This is a dependency manager right and you can use it with any kind of framework no matter what kind of framework is there. The next question again from Dean Dayal. Uh, does WordPress is identical to Drupal? So I think uh, it's just a bit out of topic but uh, obviously Drupal and WordPress are different in some uh, I mean their architecture and the, their uh, intentions for example the WordPress is based for blogs and uh, Drupal is a kind of CMS which can work on multiple things and you can also create blogs in Drupal so the next question is that uh, can we use Drupal with Composer it's from Paritosh Gautam uh, yes definitely we can use Composer with Drupal however with uh, Drupal 7 you may need to integrate it separately however, but this uh, is a part of Drupal 8's core
the next question is from Manish Sharma. If you have to choose between Zend or coding data, which will you choose and why? So specifically if uh, I would ask to create, I mean to choose between Zend or coding data, so if my project is a big project which requires a lot of dependencies and uh, integration with multiple libraries. So I would say that Zend is the better one because it has already got a lot of support for external libraries and uh, integration. But for coding data, it's something which you would need to do manually most of the stuff because it does not provide you a kind of automated uh, dependency management. The next question is from Vishal Raj. Uh, what happens when Composer fails to download the dependencies? Okay, so this seems a good question. Uh, so whenever Composer fails to download the quest, download the dependencies, so it will actually provide you a kind of log thing, which uh, states that this dependency has not been uh, provided by the downloads. So it will create you a log entry and uh, the, do the download for other dependencies would stuck over there. So because it would not uh, resolve until unless that uh, particular dependency or the extension is downloaded. Uh, the first uh, the question is from Rina Upadhyay. Is Composer somewhat related to peer in PHP? If then, if yes, then what's the difference between using peer and Composer in uh, project? So, as I've already stated that uh, peer takes so much time and it does not resolve the dependency on the project per basis and it, it, it somewhat uh, I would say is complicated however uh, if you use Composer it provides you a very simple kind of platform or maybe architecture where you can just list down the dependencies and download and Composer will download it for you otherwise uh, you would have to use uh, your command prompt and then running commands to get the library from peer and extension site pickle and all. And the next question is from Nitesh Vyas. OAuth authentication libraries are used in most of social media platforms and changes frequently. Do we have some packages for the same? Um, so Nitesh, uh, there would be uh, some libraries because I have seen that uh, Twitter, which is using the OAuth, is there with Composer, uh, I'm sh and I'm sure that there would be certain libraries which are using OAuth there. So because it has got a lot of packages overall. The next question is from Ahmed Said. When we create, when we created module in Drupal, we write dependencies in Fufal. Is a Drupal already use Composer? So Ahmed, uh, that is a kind of thing which you cannot uh, state as a dependency. So uh, dependency management is something else. So Drupal does a kind of check before installing a module that these are my dependencies in my info file and I would not uh, continue until unless this is resolved. So it will it will not download all the dependencies for you. So that's why it's different with Drupal's dependency management. And Composer is using Drupal. Yes, Composer will use Drupal, but that is a part of Drupal 8. And uh, the next question is from. Riktam Nandi, I will build my own composer for my customer's PHP project, or I will, or I will use from third party. 
let me go with the question again. I will build my own composer for my customers, PHP project, or I will use from third party. Uh, so, Riktam, uh, I actually didn't get your question. The statement seems that you are uh, saying that you will be using, uh, but I'm not sure about the question. Can you please explain that again? Uh, the next question is from Mayuresh Goyal. I have been building a project in Core PHP, no framework used. Okay. So, what the question is? If you talk about uh, can you use Composer? Yes, uh, because in Core PHP you would also require some uh, integrations as well. So you would need a kind of dependency manager. So just try to use Composer. Which is the best? F uh, okay. So the next question is from. Yala Manchili Krishna Chaitanya. So the question is, which is the best flexible framework to use this composer? So Chaitanya, you may use any kind of framework with composer. So flexibility does not comes with composer. Flexibility does comes with the framework usage. So composer, uh, in all, is a kind of simple, uh, like as I have shown you that in the composers uh, .json file there is a very simple uh, syntax to write the JSON so it does depends upon the what kind of framework you use but you can use composer with any damn framework so the next question is from I'm getting started it's from Khajim G. Atar Kajamain G. Atar. The question is, I am getting start with Symfony, but problem is Composer.fair asking for accelerator. Uh, what is that? So, Kajim, uh, in case because you have used uh, Symfony for that, and Symfony does also have a kind of an extension at dot .composer, but in case if uh, Sometimes because it seems that composer.fire file uh, fails few at few occasions, so uh, I would suggest that you should try it using uh, your uh, curl command. So just try it uh, with curl, and I'm sure that your problem is resolved. Next question is from Rohit Vijay Singh. Is framework is necessary for PHP projects? Uh, I would say uh, so because uh, framework provide you a flexible or I would say a structure or an architecture of a project. So I would recommend that we should use a kind of structured framework, but uh, it's up to you because for a simple PHP page, I might not be using any kind of framework. So, but it uh, completely depends upon the need or the requirement of the project. Mayurish Koyal, he left actually. Uh, next question is from Arvind Athul. Can we integrate with Drupal or Joomla for module dependencies? Yes, I've already answered this question. Uh, this we'll be using Drupal for it. Composer is a part of that. And yes, for Joomla does have an, ex an extension or package at packages. Just go and uh, get the download. So it will resolve your problem with Joomla. But for Drupal 6 and Drupal 7, it does also provide the support. The next question is from, for MVC, which one is the best? Yai, CI, Cakes, and again, it's uh, from Shashi Kumarti, and 
I would say that uh, it again depends upon your requirements or needs. So you would have to see what are the different uh, components a particular framework is providing and uh, does this match to your requirements or not. And maybe some other factors as well. Can you suggest a okay, so again Yala Manjali Krishna Chaitanya says can you suggest the best framework for PHP beginners? So best framework uh, in my language would be the easiest to start with to understand what and uh, I mean how a framework works. So personally if I would recommend that I would recommend that coding matter you should start with. So because it has got a very basic structure for uh, a framework, how it, I mean the structure and the directory are very easy to understand and then it's basically based on an MVC architecture so it will be easier to understand for you in the beginning. So this is some personal recommendation for the beginners who wants to use the frameworks. So the next question is from Mukesh Kumar. And the question is difference between peer and composer. Okay, so Mukesh, uh, in the presentation, it has already been stated that peer is a kind of uh, critical to understand, and uh, um, it all it does not provide you the flexibility to go project per basis, and it also requires a kind of uh, uh, one more thing, it does not resolve the nested dependencies and uh, in case if you forgot something you require a version which is not there and you want to use the version which uh, is available with there. So, so you just have to create your peer extension again or maybe the peer request again but with Composer you just have to pass what is the package required and uh, the minimum version of that package and it will get the best available package for you. Best available in the terms of what is available not in the dev dev uh, version but with the beta or maybe the alpha. The next question is from Sanket Nayak. Can we implement dependency in package management without using any framework? Yes, definitely you can use dependency management uh, without using any framework so bit because it does not depend upon any framework or CMS so you can use this dependency management with your core PHP projects as well. The next question is from Dean Dayal M. Does the dependencies install the required libraries for the required module automatically? Uh, does the dependencies install them? Okay, so the dependencies are actually the external files which needs to be downloaded at your project, right? And uh, if you talk about uh, would they get downloaded or maybe installed directly without using any human intervention? Yes, the composer will download them and get it get them installed if you have provided the scripts section in your composer.json file in case if you do not want any human intervention. My is okay. So the next question again from Victim Nandi. I will build my own composer for my composer. So it's not been updated yet. So the next question is from Mahesh Sonwani. How the Drupal is secure as compared to using any framework in web application development? How can we make it secure? So uh, you may want to get uh, Drupal security parameters uh, at Drupal.org available. So before using any kind of uh, 
Drupal or Drupal CMS or be it any other CMS or framework in your applications. You just have to, um, I would suggest that you should go to that particular website, read their documentation, how they are tackling with security and all the stuff and that should do it. Next question is from Paritosh Kotham. What kind of enterprise support available for Composer? So since Composer, uh, uh, it's kind of uh, just a dependency management, but it's not that uh, strong as we used to have Maven or any other dependency management. So it provides uh, support, but I'm not sure uh, whether any R and any enterprise level applications are using that or not. So so the next question is from uh, Dhamma Deep Lanjewar. Can we use this composer for Cake PHP framework from Deep? Okay. Uh, yes. We can use Composer for Kick PHP. The next question is from Arvind Athal. How does Drupal handle this composer? So Drupal 8 will have this composer version and it will be handling uh, the Drupal dependencies in the same way which we had uh, just like the dependencies in uh, any other framework or core, core PHP projects. Ahmed Saeed is the next person who has this question. Can you give some idea about installing Composer in Drupal lower version 7 and 6? So first of all, Ahmed, uh, it would depend that what kind of dependencies you would like to resolve with Drupal because Drupal does already provide uh, the support with module and installations and in case if you need any kind of dependencies like extensions, libraries which are required so you definitely would find a kind of module over there. Uh, however if you need a uh, separate kind of thing uh, which I'm not sure you would require once looking at the module so you may also have a kind of uh, scripts or dot .composer dot JSON at your root and then include the dependencies. The next question is from Dharmendra Kumar. Uh, okay, PHP 3.0 has a composer, it's just for the installation. What other benefit can give? So Dharmendra, uh, in case if you would like to have, uh, because the Cake PHP does have dependencies on certain libraries for uh, one of them is for their logging which uses the moon log and uh, visific editor they require a dependency so this is for the installation and if you want some other libraries needs to be installed uh, at the initiation of this uh, cake PHP so you would need to update their uh, you would need to update the composer dot file, a composer dot JSON file in the cake PHP, or you may want to include your separate composer dot JSON. And how do we integrate those two files? You may have a look at the documentation at getcomposer dot org. Darvindra Kumar again. Uh, where does the composer download from? So composer uh, can be downloaded from getcomposer.org and the packages for that can be downloaded from packages.org packages.org An example of applications using composer asked by Nitesh Vyas okay. Okay, so for the applications, um, the Twitter is using that, Facebook applications are there and it also has got 
an OOP layer for the database transactions. So, uh, I mean, there are a lot. There are a lot of applications which has been created by a composer. You may want to have a look at the list of uh, packages available at packages. Vishal Raj is the next person who asked this question. From which location does Composer download the package? It's and dependencies. So the package gist is the main repository for Composer to download each uh, third-party extension, which has been in the form of their packages. So if you need to pass the path for a particular repository that can also be done. Otherwise, on the core basis, it will fetch all the dependencies from packages.org. So the next question is from Riktam Nandi. Composer is fully third-party application. Uh, I would not say that this is third-party application, but it's a kind of an interface which uh, bridges the gap between the applications and their dependencies. So I would not say that this is a third-party application. Mosami Rai, the next person is, uh, the question is, I'm creating a site in Drupal 7. I have to show some content in tabs. I did this using jQuery tab. Now the problem is client want to display content to two tabs. So uh, I think this actually does not relate with the, the topic. So the next question is from Mahesh Sonwani. How the Drupal is secure as compared to using any framework in web application development and how can we make it secure? Again, just go to Drupal.org and read their documentation. The next question is from Rina Upadhyay. How Composer is different from PHP Maven project? As in Maven project, we already have pom.xml where we can define dependencies. How Composer is different from? So the dependency is managed by Maven as well. Uh, however, uh, I'm not sure because I've not worked with Maven. So, uh, but. I can suggest that Maven is also a kind of dependency manager, but for the project purposes, I'm not sure whether Maven is providing the support or not. So the next question is from Zeno Patiai. It would be good if you can show a small demo of how Composer is actually used in project. So. Uh, Rina, I would suggest that just go to composer.org, get composer.org. They have got a plenty of examples over there. So it's not that too difficult to get uh, this composer and using it. And the next question is from Yala Manchili, Krishna Chaitanya. Is this dependency manager for required for small projects also? So again, it depends upon the requirements. If your project does not require any third-party extension or maybe the dependency, then uh, you may not be using this dependency manager. Next question is from uh, Dean Dial M. Uh, the question is, is that coding letter framework is good with dependencies? Again, uh, for coding letter, we would be using the downloading the project and then uh, sorry projects uh, not projects it's the libraries and the extensions and then just keeping them in the helper libraries and then using them so it does it it's not just providing you the support for the dependencies however you can use composer to resolve all kind of these dependencies the next question is from Arvind Thal Tweaking Drupal core modules with Composer, is it possible? If yes, how? So 
why would we tweak Drupal modules with Composer? Because Composer does not have any relation with the module programming or any search programming, but it just provides you the uh, support with getting the libraries done. Uh, yeah, however, you can uh, use this uh, Composer to get the external libraries. For example, if there is a required library for using uh, jQuery related methods or maybe jQuery related modules, so you can just create uh, a kind of composer file, composer.json, and integrated it with your module. Uh, just by just stating the whatever library you are requiring, and I'm sure that it did work in that case. Um, the next question is from uh, Dean DLM. Is that possible to develop desktop application SAP? Does a composer support CLI on core? Uh, not sure about this question. However, uh, you may want to have a look at the composer.org for the documentation. The next question is uh, from Nitesh Vyas. So the question is, uh, what are the performance impact because of adding dependency manager as a middle layer in our application code? Okay, so uh, I would say that uh, it's not a process, it, it's not a kind of process which executes every time. It's a one-time process when you initiate the pro uh, your project or maybe at the beginning of your project, you would just download all the dependencies. When the dependencies are there, you just have to, I mean, um, it will just install everything in your project. So I would not say that this is a kind of layer. It's just an interface which uh, reduces the human intervention of downloading and putting the projects into separated directories. That's it. Any other questions? I think we are done with the questions. Um, right. Thank you very much, uh, Devesh, for the insightful presentation. It was indeed a great session. Uh, I would li also like to yeah. I would also like to thank all the participants for. Uh, their support in making this webinar a success. The recording of the webinar will be available on techgeek.com by tomorrow. Thank you all and thank you Devesh once again. Have a good day. Thanks everyone.